hope that you're good. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, macrophages and uh, in this series of lectures I will tell you about uh, the cells of the immune system, what are the various cells and what is uh, the role of different cells in immunity or defense of our bodies. So uh, we start with these phagocytes or phagocytic cells which are the eating cells. Uh, they circulate throughout the body looking for potential threats like bacteria and viruses and other um, debris that are produced inside our bodies, uh, just like the cellular debris and the cells are uh, damaged somehow inside our bodies. So these cells are always there inside our bodies to just clear off the, the debris or uh, just to neutralize threats uh, in the form of different viruses, uh, phagocytes, etc., or bacteria, etc. They are security guards and patrols. So um, we start with macrophages. These are very interesting cells and very, uh, you can say, um, unique cells, which are uh, phagocytic cells that eat upon other uh, cells or uh, you know, organelles released from the damaged cells for the viruses and bacteria, etc. Uh, so they are the very important, or the, uh, one of the most important cells of um, our immune system. Um, you also would remember, you know, uh, only you can say 150 years ago, we didn't know about much about um, immunity. For instance, uh, the scientists in those days, even uh, scientists just like uh, Pasteur, he um, was of the view that a human being or the living beings are actually defenseless. Uh, they do not uh, have any defense against the microorganisms or the pathogens that are infecting them. Uh, it was actually um, uh, Paul L. and Mechnikov, uh, and Mechnikov was actually a Russian zoologist who um, developed interest in immunology and he did some experiments on some, uh, you know, um, very pioneering uh, experiments in immunology. Uh, he discovered some types of cells that um, would eat upon microorganisms, for instance, uh, you know, he called these cells is macrophages or miniphages. Uh, so actually he had observed two types of cells, uh, big eater cells are the macrophages and uh, mini eater cells are miniphages. The miniphages we today, uh, we know these cells as neutrophils. So uh, he was uh, the first to observe that there is some kind of defense in our body. And that started this new era, a new field of immunology, um, uh, which later on many people, uh, you know, started taking interest in this area. And they uh, did a lot of very important work uh, during the early uh, 20th century. And, um, Today we know much about these macrophages that uh, these different types of, there are different types of macrophages in our body or uh, these phagocytic cells which are eating upon the microbes and the debris of our own body. So the, if you look at the origin of these cells, these cells uh, are either derived from uh, stem cells uh, in the bone marrow and then these uh, cells inside our blood tissue are called monocytes and from the mon when, when these monocytes travel into some other tissue or they penetrate into um, you know, different tissues uh, because they have this capability to penetrate into different tissues, then in the tissues we call them macrophages. And uh, these are monocyte derived ma macrophages that enter from the blood into the tissues. And on the other hand, there are embryonic 
macrophages, which are also known as tissue resident macrophages. The tissue resident macrophages are always there, right from, uh, you know, uh, the initial stages when the embryo is being formed. These macrophages are uh, there, you can say, in the fetus around mid gestation, you can find these. Uh, um, uh, macrophages of embryonic uh, origin in the embryo or in the fetus. So um, these embryonic macrophages actually um, arise from the yolk sac, or these arise from early liver uh, progenitor cells, uh, which are there in the embryo. So these actually these macrophages live in different tissues and organs and they have the capability to self-renew them just like stem cells these cells these macrophages also uh, have the capability to self-renew themselves and they live permanently inside the tissues and uh, these macrophages live for months patrolling various organs of our body uh, now if you just move on to the next slide. Uh, these macrophages, as I told you, arise from the yolk sac or, um, you know, uh, fetal liver pro uh, progenitor cells during early development in the mouse model, uh, the scientists have observed it. And they persist in different organs as heterogeneous uh, self renewing tissue resident populations, as I told you. Uh, in the bone marrow derived blood monocytes are recruited after birth to replenish the resident populations and to meet further demands during inflammation, infection, and metabolic perturbations. You know, uh, these uh, monocytes derived macrophages can be called upon by um, the tissue resident macrophages when there is need. When, whenever there are some threatened tissues in the form of different microbes, or there's some necrotic necrosis going on, there's some kind of necrotic tissue in the surrounding of these cells. So these cells have messengers. They would just, you know, release different types of cytokines and chemokines in order to attract other cells, including these tissue, these monocyte derived macrophages to enter into that tissue and help out uh, the tissue resident macrophages. So their uh, the macrophages actually are calling upon their partners to come over and, uh, you know, join them in this, uh, uh, you know, battle against uh, different types of uh, uh, threats, including uh, the microbe or um, some kind of necrotic uh, tissues or debris there in the tissues. And they also uh, release different types of cytokines and can attract other types of cells to miniphages that we know neutrophils, for instance, can also be attracted by them. So these are a very different type of cells. They can, uh, these cells can be um, activated to promote inflammation, for instance, and sometimes these uh, are, uh, cells are activated in another way, uh, which would actually be required for subsiding the inflammatory response. So although uh, they are primarily known as professional phagocytes, which engulf dying cells during development and subsequently during adult life, it has not been generally appreciated that macrophage activities extend beyond immunology and host defense. So people think of these, um, um, uh, uh, the macrophages as, uh, uh, the role of macrophages as just defense of our bodies, you know, that they are important only from the immunological point of view. But it's not the case with macrophages. The macrophages are involved in several different types of functions in our body. It's involved in uh, not only in defense, but also uh, metabolism and development. 
uh, uh, developmental processes that are going on in part of body. The macrophages are required for that kind of uh, job as well. For instance, repair of tissues, which is going on, uh, has an active role of uh, these macrophages. And uh, these macrophages express a, a broad repertoire of surface and endocell receptors and produce a large variety of regulated bioactive molecules to get it where, to gather with their ability to enter all tissues in the steady state and on demand. In both the cases, it can enter into the tissue. And they constitute a dispersed organ system able to influence and in response to every other system in the body. So um, you can take these macrophages for a big, uh, you know, or a dispersed organ system in your body. And this organ organ system can respond to different challenges or uh, different situations differently in our body. For instance, it, as I told you, it has got a role in development, it has got a role in metabolism, it has got a role in defense. So the role is also quite uh, diverse and it's not uh, limited only to defense of our body, just eating up on the microbes or the debris in our body. And these cells are motile and display a range of membrane receptors in them, quite, as I told you, to recognize and respond to a larger portion of the host derived and formed ligand. And uh, one of, uh, you know, as I told you about their their property to eat upon them, their or other you know microbes or other cells. And these cells also have the property to eat up on their own constituents or the organelles or uh, you know the functional organelles inside the cells or uh, inside its own uh, you know uh, body inside the macrophage. If there's some organelle is not functional functional, for instance, or there's something wrong with it. This, uh, uh, you know, cell has got the capability to get rid of that, to just, you know, engulf that and digest that particular organic. Uh, this uh, cell can internalize its entire membrane in 20 minutes, you know, and even uh, it, it can reproduce the same membrane or the constituents that it has internalized or just to secrete it out and make another membrane around it in less than two minutes. So this is a unique property of this cell that it can internalize and reform its own plasma membrane made of phospholipids and different proteins there uh in less than 20 minutes it can uh, you know perform this particular task in heterophagy uh you you know about that that uh, external cargo or external things in the form of microbes and debris can be taken up by this particular cell as well another important uh, property of this cell is that this macrophage can differentiate between uh, two things you know, apoptosis and necrosis, or apoptosis, uh, you know, or you know about apoptosis is a programmed cell death. And when the cell is damaged to an extent that the cell feels that it no longer is able to survive, then the program, the genetic program for that type of cell death is initiated inside the cell. In that genetic program actually leads to a programmed uh, to a very organized cell uh, death where, you know, you know everything inside uh, the plasma membrane is digested, packed in small bags when it blibs out and these blibs are then taken up by different types of macrophages. And so this, this is a normal job, you know, because the cells inside your bodies are not destined to live there forever. The cells of different organs of your body have to live for some time, but they have to be replaced by newer cells. 
So where are the older cells going? For instance, where are the older RBCs or the lymphocytes going? They have to live for some time and then your body has to make new cells and just get rid of those older cells. So uh, these cells are gotten rid of by this process of apoptosis. When the cells are older, when they are not performing their fu uh, function properly, or when they are not producing enough uh, energy, for instance. So such type of cells are disposed of, and this is actually done with the help of these different types of phagocytic cells. Uh, the macrophages actually can, uh, you know, uh, uh, recognize a cell that is going to uh, uh, that that is that has gotten older, for instance, or dysfunctional, and it can just take up that particular cell and uh, you know digest it and uh, you know get rid of such types of cells. So this is normal physiological reason for uh, apoptosis. Programmed cell death is for uh, getting rid of such type of cells in our body. In necrosis is something different, you know. Uh, necrosis can be due to, uh, you know, chemical injury or uh, due to microbial attacks or due to some other reasons, physical injuries, for instance, which damages the tissues and cells. And such damaged cells are also sensed by, uh, you know, the macrophages. Now it responds differently to these two types of things, uh, the apoptosis and necrosis, apoptotic cell or and a necrotic cell. The response of the macrophage is different in these two cases because uh, in apoptotic, apoptotic cells, um, you can say that the program for inflammation is not initiated, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, the macrophage is not into, uh, is not uh, activated um, in a way that would promote uh, the inflammatory response. But in case of necrosis, the inflammatory response is promoted. The macrophage is activated in another way, and that way is uh, responsible for, uh, you know, instigating the and the, uh, the inflammatory response inside um, the, uh, the body, you know, to release types of cytokines that would recruit other cells or inform other cells to come around and, you know, uh, start this inflammatory response in order to get rid of the necrotic tissue. Similar to the case with microbes, if this cell comes in contact with the microbe, again, uh, you can say different types of microbes that come in contact here. These microbes are sensed differently from an apoptotic cell. Uh, in, in, in the case of apoptotic cells, anti-inflammatory products like, uh, you know, interleukin-10 or transformant you know, growth factor beta or PGE2, these are released by the cells. But in the case of the necrotic tissues, or, uh, you know, hmm, um, the microbes, the response of this or activation of this macrophage is different. It would release a different set of cytokines and those cytokines uh, would be responsible for enhancing the inflammatory response in our body. So um, how are these cells recognized by the macrophage? The macrophage has got eyes all around on its external surface. And these eyes are actually different receptors for different things. Uh, for um, pathogens, just like bacteria or viruses or parasites, etc., there are receptors which are specifically for the recognition of, uh, you know, such types of pathogens is these are cells of innate immune system. So they have receptors that can recognize groups of pathogens, like groups of bacteria can be recognized with the help of a pattern of, uh, you know, antigens on their surfaces. 
a pattern is, uh, for bacteria, uh, for instance, gram negative bacteria would have one pattern, uh, you know, uh, in their cell walls, which would be recognized by these macrophages, all the gram negative bacteria would be recognized in a similar way, you know. So this cell is not going to differentiate uh, whether it is Klebsiella or uh, it is uh, E. coli or it is uh, some other type of bacteria, uh, you know, some other gram negative bacteria. The response of this cell is going to be the same for all gram negative bacteria. You know, it would be activated the same way because the set of antigens that it de detects on these gram negative bacteria with the help of a set of receptors, which is present on the surface of these macrophages is the same. The set of antigens on these different types of gram negative or gram positive bacteria is uh, called, uh, um, uh, you know, PEMP. And the set of receptors which are present on these macrophages are called uh, PRR or the pattern recognition receptors. So uh, there is a pattern, uh, you know, uh, on the pathogens, the pattern of antigens on the pattern, and that pattern uh, is recognized the pattern by the pattern recognition receptors on them. There's different types of TLRs, toll-like receptors, for instance, or um, uh, the PRR, or the pattern recognition receptors. So, uh, toll-like receptors or NLRs on the surface of these macrophages. And the PAMs can be anything just like, uh, you know, some pattern on them, just like lactin is a, uh, you know, is a pattern recognized by these cells. So the PAMs and PRRs bind here. The PRRs are for the PAMP. They bind with the PAMP and the, this cell is uh, activated. So when these uh, the, uh, pathogen, uh, pathogens are recognized here, the pathogen recognition would uh, initiate this inflammatory response in uh, this particular cell. Uh, the pro-inflammatory cytokines will be released by these cells, which would attract other cells to come and join this cell at the site of infection. Similarly, for uh, other jobs, just like for um, uh, when normally these cells are doing apoptosis in our bodies, you do not feel whether there is some problem in your body or um, there is no sign of inflammation in, in your bodies. Uh, although this apoptosis, the process of apoptosis going on uh, in different tissues all the times, these uh, macrophages are doing the same job. For instance, the RBCs, when the RBCs are gotten rid of inside your body, it's a continuous process. New cells are being made all the times and the older cells, they are, uh, you know, removed from your system. So uh, these RBCs again, uh, for instance, when the, there is a defective RBC or diseased RBCs, or there is um, uh, an older uh, RBC, which has reached its life's, uh, you know, span, uh, and these cells have to be removed. So the, uh, these macrophages have this sense to recognize uh, this kind of, uh, you know, the older RBCs in the system. And there are different ways that how these um, are uh, recognized. It's a re receptor mediated uh, process, for instance. One way of recognition is for such type of cells would be through different types of uh, cytokines or chemokines that can uh, actually tell the macrophage to just, you know, grab the cell and get rid of it. Uh, for instance, um, some of the cells may become energy deficient. Um, they would not be making, uh, you know, the um, uh, energy, enough energy required for its function. So such cells uh, have to be removed out of the system because they are 
burden on the system or they have just uh, lived their life and they have to be replaced. Um, in such type of cells, you know, the strategy of the cell, uh, you know, uh, regarding uh, metabolism actually changes. And uh, some of the cells, they would, rather than going for oxidative phosphorylation to make more energy, they would just go for uh, Warburg metabolism, you know, making far fewer ADVs, for instance, and different types of metabolites, which should uh, normally are not there inside the cell. But when these secondary metabolites are formed inside the cell, so these abundance of these secondary metabolites can signal some cytokine productions inside these cells, which can, uh, the, those cytokines are actually a signal for the macrophage to just, you know, recognize this cell. Some of the cellular debris are the damage associated patterns or such types of diseased cells or the uh, dying cells, uh, the dying cells you know, uh, they, uh, their membrane structure is altered slightly. For instance, some of the phospholipids, uh, phospholipids are arranged in some, uh, in the membrane in, uh, in a particular way, for instance, the glycerol heads are outside and the fatty acid tails are towards the inner core of the membrane. But uh, in these uh, dying cells or diseased cells or damaged cells, uh, there is a different uh, pattern. These fatty acid tails in some cases are facing outwards and the glycerol heads are towards the uh, inner core of the membrane. And this type of pattern, uh, such type of phospholipids when exposed on the membrane, these are then take uh, these are th this is actually a signal for the uh, macrophage to just recognize this pattern uh, and just you know go and uh, you know engulf such type of cell which or uh, such type of uh, you know uh, cell which has exposed uh, phospholipids in this way uh, like phosphatidyl uh, serin when exposed on the surface of the, uh, the cell or in the plasma membrane of cells, it, that is a signal for the macrophages to recognize that particular cell, uh, you know, and just engulf and, and dispose it off. When uh, this macrophage also is doing recycling because when it is going to dispose of the RBCs, uh, there are lysosomes here, so it would use its hydrolytic enzymes and machinery in order to get rid of uh, this uh, cell. And, uh, you know, uh, the ferritin, um, which is made here with the help of this degradation, would be recycled to the bone marrow for, uh, you know, reuse. Uh, in the production of RBCs again. So um, this cell, yeah, it's a magical cell. It's doing a lot of different things, which uh, is uh, a really, uh, you know, amazing uh, story of the cell. This has a greater capability of adaptation as well. No other body cell is uh, age adaptable is the macrophages because the macrophages, as I told you, are either living in the tissues or they are derived uh, from the mono, uh, blood, uh, uh, stem cells derived monocytes, which are there in the blood. So uh, when the monocytes are called upon by the tissue resident macrophages and these monocytes enter into tissues, we call them macrophages again. But you know that when a cell enters from one, uh, you know, uh, tissue into another tissue, it's very hard for the cell to survive in that condition because uh, there is a specific microenvironment for each and every cell. And the cell taken from one tissue may not reside uh, in, in another tissue. It may either change itself or die. If you look at the morphology, and the function of a liver cell that is different from a kidney cell. A kidney cell is different from a heart cell. 
a heart cell is different from a skin cell. So in uh, different organs, there are different cells, they have different morphology, and their function is also different from each other. So that difference is ensured by the microenvironment of the uh, tissues because there are specific factors in the microenvironments of tissues which are responsible for keeping the morphology and uh, the function of those cells living in that particular organ and tissue is uh, intact. Uh, they, the, the, a liver cell is doing uh, you know, a different job than a kidney cell. But if you take out the liver cell and uh, you graft it in the kidney, the liver cell may not be doing the same job as it doing in uh, the liver. Uh, either it would not survive, or if it survives there in the liver, uh, in the kidney, it has to uh, lose on its own personality or its own, uh, you know, morphology or its own function, whatever it was doing in the liver, because the factors responsible for that morphology and function are not available to it in the liver, in the kidney. But if you look at these uh, macrophages, they keep their identity in different tissues. They're, they are present in liver, they are present uh, in kidney, they are present in skin, they are present in each and every organ or tissue of your body. They, as I told you, they are tissue resident macrophages, which are already living there in different tissues, right from the embryonic stage. When uh, you were an embryo or a fetus, right from that stage, all different tissues of your body have these resident macrophages inside um, uh, them. And they are keeping their personal identity as macrophages. They have a specific, you know, uh, chromatin landscape, but they are keeping their identity, you know, a macrophage inside a uh, spleen, inside a liver or inside a kidney is not doing the function that these actually uh, organs are doing. Although it is involved in uh, different things like, uh, you know, uh, remodeling or you can say regeneration of that particular organ or defense of that particular organ, but this actually, uh, this cell is not changing its uh, morphology according to uh, the, that organ or kidney, uh, kidney or liver or any other organ. It's not changing its function as well. It's keeping its integrity. It's, so it's a magical, uh, it's a magic. It's, you know, it's, a, it's an unusual thing, you know? Uh, as we say that the cancer cell loses on its identity, it can just survive in each and every uh, part of your body or every part of tissue. Uh, so the macrophages also are keeping their identity, you know. These monocyte derived macrophages, again, when they enter into different tissues, these monocyte derived macrophages, again, are very important here because they would adapt to that particular tissue environment in, uh, uh, in no time, you can say, uh, because they are uh, readily uh, available uh, there when they are called upon by the tissue resident macrophage and the other cells which are releasing different cytokines. So they are uh, very much adaptable cells, not uh, like other cells, so it's quite amazing that these cells uh, are very important cells uh, in our bodies and are doing some magical uh, jobs inside the body. And they are equipped with all the machinery that is needed for degradation of the microbes, degradations of the cellular debris, differentiation uh, between, you know, apoptosis and uh, necrosis, differences, uh, dif differentiating between apoptosis and, uh, you know, different types of microbes or pathogens and activating these cells in, uh, you know, activation of these cells actually determines that how these, uh, what would actually be the response of these cells uh, and uh, what actually would uh, ensue, for instance, uh, you know, 
whether an inflammatory response is needed in order to neutralize the threat or whether the inflammatory response is not needed. The pro-inflammatory and anti-inflammatory, anti all the weaponry is there. And it is just up to activation of the cells that how the cell is activated and how the cell senses these different things in not responding to normal its normal physiological uh, roles, not responding in a in a uh, you know in a proactive way when uh, it is doing its normal job because the body has it doesn't have to tell the body that something is going on. I'm going, I'm going to uh, dispose of the debris or you know the disease cell from your system. Uh, so. In the case of inflammation, you would feel it because there is pain, there is heat, there is temperature, uh, there is swelling. All these things are cardinal signs of inflammation and our inflammatory response. And that happens only in the case when you are infected with some microbe, when uh, there is some kind of damage to your tissues by different kinds of chemical radiations, uh, et cetera, or uh, physical injury to your tissue and that tissue is damaged or the cells are dead and uh, your, your body just wants to get rid of such cells. In that case, uh, you uh, would feel these different signs of inflammation. And that tells you that the cells have been recruited by, uh, with the help of these macrophages and the cells are fighting off uh, those pathogens or just getting rid of the debris. So, um, I would tell you more about um, the macrophages and uh, probably in uh, the next lecture. Uh, that's, I think, enough for the day. So thank you very much for listening to this and hope to see you again.